This is a 1996 Fender Custom Shop Relic 60s Stratocaster. The reason this strap sounds a little off to my ears is that they decided to use these stupid staggered pole pickups. Fender still does this on a lot of their high-end guitars that really don't benefit from staggered poles. So if you have a Strat or a Tele that sounds harsh or unpleasant, maybe this video will help you to fix an otherwise decent guitar. I recently gave this Strat a proper setup and cleaned off a lot of the gunk that was not a part of the original Relic job. Now, according to the owner who bought this guitar used about 20 years ago, this was a master-built instrument. As far as I can tell, master-built for these early Relics was more akin to a custom order. But what I think makes it master-built is these big old jumbo frets and a 12-inch radius fretboard. Obviously, whoever ordered this guitar was going after the Stevie Ray Vaughan vibe. Which brings us back to these awful staggered pull pickups. Now, there are two reasons why vintage Fender pickups have staggered poles. The first, and the most obvious, is the radius of the fretboard. With a few exceptions, Fender used a 7 and a quarter inch radius from about the early 1950s until sometime in the early 1980s. That rounder radius puts the D and G strings quite a bit higher off the body compared with the outside strings. By raising the pole pieces, it ensures the output stays consistent across all six strings. Now you might be wondering, why don't they follow a curved shape if it's to follow the radius? Early electric guitar strings came with a wound G string, and wound strings back in the 50s were steel cores with nickel wraps, which meant that the steel core of the G-string, the part that interacts the most with the pickup, was actually just a little bit farther away from the pickup than the nickel wrap. After Fender compensated for the radius and the strings, they were left with what we now know as the vintage stagger. So what happens if we use that same stagger with a plain G-string? Well, the G-string ends up being a little bit louder than it should. What if we also have a flatter fretboard? Let's say a 12-inch radius. Now, we can only set the outside strings at their ideal heights. Then we have to compensate for the stagger to make sure that the middle strings aren't too loud. This is a great example of where vintage accurate is not necessarily better. Now, as it turns out, the owner of this lovely guitar had already purchased a set of Lindy Fraylin Vintage Hot Strat pickups with a hybrid stagger several years ago. The hybrid stagger is staggered, but much flatter than the vintage stagger. Fraylin actually recommends the hybrid stagger for guitars with anything flatter than a nine and a half inch radius. Unfortunately, the difference in sound isn't something I can really demonstrate. In my opinion, the difference in output isn't something you really hear so much as feel as the player. If you're playing the strings with similar intensity, every now and again, the notes are just gonna feel wrong. While testing out this guitar, I would occasionally notice random notes just hurting my ears. To keep this guitar as original as possible, the owner wants me to build a new wiring harness so I don't have to mess with a lot of the original solder joints. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll let you know how much of a difference it makes. So in conclusion, do staggered poles versus flat poles make a difference? Yes. Can you hear it in this video? Probably not. But if you suspect that the problem with your guitar is an issue of balance between the strings, absolutely switching the pole configuration of your pickups will make a difference. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.